In this video, I wanted to showcase the diversity of birds in Florida. So I went to a really cool location for about 30 days off and on. And I managed to capture some really incredible stuff, some really incredible footage and pictures. And I wanted to share that with you. And right now I'm not in Florida anymore. I'm actually in Colorado for the summer. I'm kind of migrating like the birds do. And I'm offering workshops up here. And I wanted to show you this really quick view of this really cool area. Look at this view over here and then we'll go on our trip to Florida. Sunrise, the perfect time to set off in search of adventure. It's also the perfect time to find a wide variety of animals, like this female white-tailed deer, whose only real concern are the annoying gnats buzzing around her head. But I'm searching for something else, the apex predator of these skies, the bald eagle. And not just one, but an entire family on a nest. And sunrise will be the perfect time to photograph these massive birds of prey. I just need to find the nest and wait. That giant pile of sticks wasn't too difficult to find, but it looks like the only resident is this gorgeous juvenile bald eagle. Finding the nest with no adults is actually a really good thing. That means the adults are out searching for food, and all I have to do is wait for them to come flying in. So the waiting game begins as the early morning light starts to get better and better with each passing minute. I double check my settings to make sure I'm ready for the arrival. I have a nice fast shutter speed of 1 2,000th of a second. This should be perfect for the adults flying in and I chose an aperture of f5. This helped me get a little bit more of this early morning light while keeping the ISO nice and low, a proven recipe for beautiful images. I noticed something moving across the sky in the distance, a streak of brown and white with a slight shimmer of orange. The distant sound of large wings moving through the air gets louder and louder. Time seems to slow, but my heartbeat quickens. I raise my camera, take a deep breath, and exhale as the adult eagle suddenly appears in the frame. I lock focus and fire away. Each click of the shutter freezing a moment in time. The eagle has landed, I think to myself. The eagle has landed with a huge fish and I was lucky enough to capture the entire moment in a series of images that I will never forget. What a great way to start the morning and I haven't even arrived at my location yet. This is what we call nature's cotton candy. It's really sweet. You can just pick, I'm just kidding. It's some kind of spider web. It's really cool though. It's all covered in little teeny droplets of dew. Maybe it's a caterpillar. Uh, web. I'm not sure. There's a Merlin right here perched on this tree. Beautiful little bird. I've never gotten this close to them. They're usually really skittish. I grabbed a quick shot of this awesome little bird of prey before moving down the road. I was really eager to get to my destination. A beautiful eastern meadowlark perches on an old fence post to get a better look at the world below. This bird has a brilliant yellow chest and it was nice enough to turn and face me for just a second so that I could capture this shot. I mean, look at all of that color. What a beautiful bird. But once again, I feel an urgency to get to my location by the water's edge because I know there will be a lot of action down there. I'm on the road driving through vast pastures and swampland and a great blue heron decides to fly in the same direction right with me. But then off in the distance, I spot a really cool bird who spends summers in Florida, a swallow-tailed kite. This incredible bird comes all the way from South America during migration. They spend their summers here in Florida, and seeing them is always a real treat. They just seem to glide effortlessly in the air without ever stopping. This one was cruising real low over some trees where it swooped in and picked up something to eat. These birds will usually eat while they're flying. They just don't ever stop. But this one decided to come a little bit closer so I could see what it was going to eat for breakfast. And there it is. This swallowtail kite is having lizard for breakfast this morning. Finally, I make it to my destination, the shore of Lake Kissimmee, and I'm greeted by a young limpkin who seems to not have a care in the world. Limpkins are so much fun to watch. They love to get huge snails from the shallow water, and once they do, they bring them up on land to open them up. So, how does a limpkin open a snail? They lift their heads high into the air, and then they slam their long pointed beaks into the snail shell. They do this repeatedly until the snail shell cracks. You would think that slamming their beaks into a hard snail shell would hurt. Well, sometimes the impact is a little uncomfortable. And what does a limpkin do? Well, it just shakes it off and it goes back to work. Let's have a closer look at this beautiful bird. One thing's for certain, limpkins are very unique. Look at those beautiful earthy colors with the brown and white feathers. And that beak has just a touch of black on the tip and some nice orange color as well. And just in case you're wondering what a baby limpkin looks like, 
Here's a shot of an entire family I found at a completely different location. I just wanted to share these little fuzzballs with you because they are so cute. I notice a few small birds fluttering through the tall grass at my feet. I turn my attention to them and discover an incredible world of fast moving feathers. A small group of warblers has staked out the area and these birds are here to show me that they are much more than a beautiful song and colorful feathers. They are here to show me their incredible hunting skills. Blind mosquitoes are on the menu and these extremely fast moving birds have no problems flying in and getting them. The insects try to hide on the stalks and undersides of the plants, but the warblers know their hiding places and make quick work of the thousands of blind mosquitoes hiding in the vegetation. Even a fast shutter speed of one four thousandth of a second isn't quite fast enough to completely freeze the motion on these little wings. Tracking them with any sort of autofocus is practically impossible. You have to pre-focus in one area and hope the bird appears there. In this situation, I would focus on the bird right before it would take off, or I would pick one plant and focus there and hope the bird would come in for a bug. Eventually, I was able to capture these images that show a very different side to what is often considered a simple songbird. These birds are incredible predators and deserve some more recognition. A pair of woodpeckers have chosen an old fence post as the perfect place to start a new family. And despite the prominent red color on the head, this is actually a red-bellied woodpecker. Just look at those beautiful colors on this bird. Those rosy red cheeks, the red head, and the contrasting black and white spots on the back. And then take a look at that foot. It's amazing how this bird can just hold on to this old weathered chunk of wood. Another beautiful bird to add to the list. Being on the shore of a huge lake means there is a lot of food. But even with plenty of food, there is still competition. And this great egret is the local bully. The Anhinga has done all the hard work here, but the egret wants that fish and it isn't afraid to move in and take it. The Anhinga, not ready to give up, pulls away, loses its balance, and falls back into the lake. Right now we're on the shore of, I believe this is Lake Kissimmee, and we're literally sitting at a boat ramp because the amount of birds that hang out here is absolutely incredible. There's two pairs of eagles that hang out here. There's a pair that hang out on this side, and a pair that hang out on that side. And they're so frequent that the locals have actually given them a name. This is the North Eagles, and these are the South Eagles. And apparently their territory, they never come into contact with each other. And this road splits their territory right down the middle. So you have eagles on both sides of you that come in really low and fish right here in these lily pads. It's absolutely incredible. And most of the birds just don't really seem to care that you're here. And all these boats, this big loud air boats are going by, nothing, doesn't phase them at all. It's really cool. The first eagle on the scene is this beautiful juvenile. I really like the colors on these younger eagles. They have such a nice pattern, which creates a really cool contrast. For this young eagle who has just left the nest, that big blue sky symbolizes freedom because for this bird, the sky is the limit. But I spot a large female eagle who has decided to perch on an old fence post. I quickly make my way to the adult and I'm met halfway by another local photographer. The two of us slowly move closer, take a seat in the soft grass, raise our cameras, and start taking shots of this beautiful bird. And here she is. And it's easy to see why this bird is the apex predator of the skies. I mean, look at it. It's just gorgeous. So now both of us are waiting for the moment she decides to take flight, but this bird decides to make us wait, and we do so very patiently. I double even triple check my settings to make sure I'm ready for the takeoff. I have a fast shutter speed of 1 2500th of a second. That should help freeze the movement on those large wings. And I chose an aperture of 6.3. This should create a wide enough depth of field to capture the entire bird in the shot. As Dave and I wait, we are joined by two more photographers. One of the photographers slowly approaches and asks us if it's okay to come up and join us. We both nod and Simon sits down with us. Simon has come all the way from England to capture some images of Florida's amazing array of birds, and I can tell by the smile on his face that he feels like a little kid in a candy store. A fourth photographer by the name of Carl now joins us, and he was nice enough to take a shot of me patiently waiting for the eagle to fly. Thanks, Carl. I jokingly whisper to Simon and Dave, all we need is for this eagle to turn around and face us before taking off. The eagle tilts its head back, cries, and then slowly turns to face us. I can't believe what I'm seeing. And I decide to ask this beautiful bird for one more favor. Hey, could you just jump towards us and then take to the skies? And believe it or not, she listens. Suddenly the air is filled with four cameras as the shutters open and close like an audience clapping its hands after the final encore. This beautiful bird takes to the skies and makes four photographers extremely happy. 
What a great experience we all had as we shared those few awesome moments. Each one of us walking away with a memory none of us will soon forget. Thank you, you big, beautiful, majestic bird. But our visit with this incredible bird wasn't quite over yet. Once the eagle flew from its perch, it ascended high into the sky and circled the lake until it spotted something in the water below. Its catch is some type of old giant fish carcass. I mean, look at the size of it. Now we get to see what those big meaty bird legs are for. The eagle took one look at its catch and decided it really wasn't worth the effort and it dropped it back into the lake where it sank to the murky bottom. What else can we find along the shore of this lake? The always entertaining tricolored heron decides to show us what it's like to walk on water while searching for minnows. These birds never disappoint and that smooth water surface was perfect for bouncing some light back up onto this incredible bird. It basically was acting like a giant reflector. And in this shot, you can see two minnows jumping for their lives. Here, I'll highlight them so you can see them a little bit better. There you go. Now that you can see them, let's see without the highlights. Whoa, that's pretty crazy. It would appear that this evasive maneuver was a success because this tricolored heron danced its way back to land without a fish. There's a limpkin like right here. There's a limpkin back over there. There's great blue herons, there's egrets. But what's really, really cool is there's snail kites. And they come right through here and they drop down in the water right here and they pick up snails. Ah yes, the awesome snail kite. An amazing bird that comes in two varieties. This is a beautiful female and you can tell by those brown and tan colors. Let's have a closer look at that beautiful face. Oh wow, that is one wild looking bird. And watching these birds hunt for food, it never gets old. They practically submerge themselves in the water and use their long curved talons to pluck a slow moving snail from the weeds. And then it's off into the air as this impressive bird takes the snail for a ride. Male snail kites look much different. They have a dark smoky charcoal appearance to their wings and who could ignore those red piercing eyes and that awesome curved beak. They use the same hunting method to pull snails from the water and they are very successful at what they do as well. These are awesome birds and I never get tired of photographing them. As the sun starts to set, a pair of beautiful sandhill cranes decides to spend the last few minutes of the day dancing in the tall reeds along the shore of the lake. This graceful and sometimes comical dance is part of this amazing bird's mating ritual. One crane will find anything it can on the ground and toss it into the air. As if trying to mimic the toss, the crane will often also jump into the air with an incredible wing display. Each crane takes part in this dance and catching it on camera was a real treat. That nice late afternoon light helped create that beautiful golden color that highlights everything in this scene. A local boat captain told me that these two birds now have a nest with two eggs in the same exact place where this mating dance took place. How awesome is that? I finish off the day with a gorgeous sunset while the awesome snail kite is busy eating its last meal of the day, some fresh escargot courtesy of the abundant apple snails in the area. I captured the slow motion clip with the Nikon D850 and I didn't even need a tripod. This is one feature that is quickly becoming my favorite. I can hand hold this camera with a big monster lens on it and capture incredible slow motion footage just like this. Look at that river down there. I don't know if you can see it in this video or not, but man, that's cool. That was a pretty crazy amount of birds in that video in that one location. What was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing what everybody says and click the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead. I got a lot of cool content planned. I'm going all over the United States. You can have some cool stuff. And I'm doing workshops too. And if you'd like to do a workshop with me, I do them in two places, in Colorado and in Florida. And the best way to find out how to come out and do a workshop with me is to go to my website, photoworkshopsandtours.com. And until next time, I'll see you later.